Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back to the Team Nerd Herd podcast, where their best advice is if you want to do it right, collect what you like. But for today's Fanime uh, talk, you know, the, the, the way the saying goes, if you want to do it right, anime for life. And I hope you guys are all having a good three-day Memorial Day weekend, you know, just getting that uh, relaxation in, you know. But, uh, you know, Steve, how, how, how are you enjoying your three-day weekend, man? Oh, man, it's going to be a four-day weekend tomorrow. So I'm enjoying oh, you got that much extra of, day. That extra, extra. That you know? extra, extra. All right. All right. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? But I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Just ready to talk about Blade of the Immortal. You know, in the background, you guys are looking at the, the main man. So we're going to go ahead and get, you know, talking to that. But before right. you want to, you want to yeah. holler out our uh, herd chat? I was going to say, that's right, man. Let's get this going, dude. Let's holler at the nerd chat. Let's get our moderators Ooh. the shout outs, man. Boom. Moderators. Rudy, brother Rudy, brother number one, something long, brother number two, what's two. cracking, brother? Thursday's coming up, man, Mondo Mail Call, he will be making an appearance. That's right, I'm pumped, First I'm excited. Appearance. Me too, man, me too. And brother number three, Deanime, etc., Deanime, etc., yeah, Senpai. Man. And then, man, let's go ahead and give shout-outs to DJ Abomination and Plain Close D, the DJs and music to Team Nerd Herd. And now That's we're right. going to go ahead and dip and dab all around the Team Nerd the Herd church. podcast, yeah, man. You already that. know who's in here. Yo, you got brother number one, Rudy. <laughs> brother <laughs> Rudy, up, Rudy, what's going on? You got Glenn 2K, my That's horror right. hermano, man. What's up, Glenn? Omnibus King, man. He got some omnibuses. You got DNMA, et cetera, already laughing. Oh, what, yeah, what, dude. what is this, classic concentration over here? <laughs> 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 we're supposed to figure there, that out. <laughs> there we go. That's, that's the new game Clint. show. Inja, Binja, Inja, Binja, building. What's going on, Inja? What's Binja? up, girl? Oh, ble a bleeding star. Right What's in, happening, right bleeding star? How's it going, man? Greetings. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining, bleeding. And I think comics and pops. That's Alonzo right. We got our man. The building. What's going on, brother Alonzo? How's it going, my man? Good to see you. Good to see you. We're going to keep on going down. Oh, you're up in right. here, too? Eric the Phoenix. Oh, yeah. You know, I have to say what's up to everybody, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's most definite. Most definite. Okay. Yeah. Lord Chucks. My man, That's Lord right. Chucks from the say, BLC. Chucks. Sending them Pop smoke. in the signals. building. The biggest little city collectors. Woo! What's up, brother? All right. I think we are all caught up. Oh, no. We got comic yeah, book got combos. Comic the book Bronx combos. is in the house. What's up? You know? The bridge is over. The bridge is over. Brah, brah, brah. Yeah, that's it, bro. You got to give <laughs> it to them. You know? That's right. That taste of hip hop, you know. That's right, brother. But I think we are all caught up. And let's go ahead and tell them what we're going to, what you're going to deliver them today, brother. I mean, it's not me. Uh, well, I mean, hey, you're man, the hey, of this outfit, brother. Hey, man. You know, we're just here to talk anime, you guys. If you're already in here, you guys already know what the segment's going to be about. We're talking Blade of the Immortal um very reminiscent of what ninja scrolls so i kind of just set the set the pacing for that especially like with the art style um kind of going into the anime um if you guys get a chance to watch it you guys will see some of the uh some of the villains just kind of having that uh kind of devil of kimbone esque you know flavor to them um but it is uh very good battle style anime, you guys. So we're just going to go ahead and get into it, man. Uh, we, we start out with our main character, uh, at, starting out as a young girl by the name of Rin. Uh, her and her family just get uh, bombarded, uh, you know, by uh, these master swordsmen. Uh, her father was a master swordsman and they just came in to just take, take him out. Uh, and unfortunately for her, she wasn't even left with her mom. They... Uh, you know, did some horrible stuff to her mom, kept her alive for a while, but, you know, just did some, you know, very unspeakable things. Uh, and so now she's just uh, lived on and is just growing with that hate in her heart. You know, kind of like we, we right now we got a uh, revenge story, you guys. And so uh, the first issue is violent. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. There's a lot of blood, uh, a lot of gore, slashing, cutting. You know, this is the way it is. The way of the samurai and uh she and our our girl rin this is the girl that is going that we're going to be following this entire time and she uh is practicing you know her swordsmanship uh and she sets out to uh defeat this group of swordsmen and the group is uh goes by the name of the ito ito ryu um uh, 
And uh, since the years have passed, their uh, their numbers have grown. They still have uh, kind of like their core members, but they are starting to rally up, you know, the masses just to kind of solidify their uh, their dominance kind of around the, the the land and the region. And so they're just going out, taking out schools, you know, one by one. And later we get to understand why, which is, you know, a uh, very way of the warrior in my opinion. Uh, but uh, Rin is uh, just going on this task of basically for revenge. She wants uh, vengeance for the death of her family. And so she gets the advice from this kind of like this older woman, kind of like peddler monk like girl and says, you know, like you, you need a bodyguard girl, you need a bodyguard. And so she steers her in the right direction. Uh, and there's wanted posters, posters everywhere for this samurai with one eye, um, goes his, uh, I guess you could say his alias is the, the, the killer of a killer of a hundred. And so she sets out and she actually finds him and she's, uh, the, this is going to be our supporting character. Mr. Manji, who is literally, you, you get, get the title of killer of a hundred, you know, like that just speaks volumes, you know, and he, this guy is a Billy badass, you guys, Ooh, uh, you know, sla ever? that's right. Slashing people with just one eye, man. Um, and we get a little bit of backstory too. It's, it's, uh, you know, the, he has a young sister or had a young sister, I should say that is very resembles a lot of Rin. And so, um, you know, he, he kind of has a little bit of a pit in his heart uh, for this girl because she looks like his sister who uh, in a battle uh, and his sister actually just got caught up in this uh, feud war that he just kind of got himself in. And so she was a casualty of this. So, you know, he's trying to, uh, you know, kind of help this girl out just because of this. And so they set off on this journey um, and we encounter one of our first, uh, first Ito Ryu, uh, you know, kind of master swordsman who's, uh, this is, this guy goes by the name of Sabato and he's just a very sadistic and twisted individual. Uh, he's like sending poems to Rin and, you know, she figures the way, the best way to kind of get close to him is to, you know, uh, send poems back and just kind of entertain this, uh, you know, entertain this guy. And he, uh, they end up kind of making the agreement like, you know, basically, girl, you're going to die, you know. Um, but uh, she got some tricks up her sleeve and she just throws these kind of flying, uh, flying little daggers. And uh, she was skillful enough uh, to un unmask this guy and uh, kind of see what's going on. He, he, you know, he kind of has the he, he's got height. He's got the kind of Shogun samurai mask, you know, and so she uncovers everything. And to her surprise, this guy has uh, two decapitated heads, female heads on his shoulders, you know, so uh, kind of going back again to that Devils of Kimon Ninja Scroll esque, you know, like this is this guy. I feel like he could he fits right in this uh, mm -hmm. that era, and, you know, and so he uh, he the two people that he has on his shoulders is one is his ex-wife. Um, and, and the other is actually Rin's mother, you guys. And so she is just caught off guard, you know, very emotional, um, you know, and, uh, beef and sometime, you know, before that Manji kind of comes in and just tries to kind of take things for kind of tries to lighten the situation and gets, tries to get Sabato to fight mm -hmm. him in a way. And Sabato's just not having it and slices off Manji's leg straight away. So, you know, in the beginning, I was just like, dude, I thought this guy was supposed to be dope. You know, he's getting his leg chopped off already. Um, but uh, the cool thing about Manji, you guys, after, uh, you know, this guy, Sabato, gets closer to Rin and he's basically got her on the ropes and he's saying, you know, like, I'm basically going to replace your head with your mother's head. You know, like, this is how I value beauty. Uh, it should be eternal. There's beauty in death. I mean, this guy is one sadistic, mm -hmm. twisted fool. And uh, as he's kind of going to go in for the kill, Manji steps in from the back and just and and gives him, you know, the old blade, the ups that the old blade in the back, uh, and uh, you know, with one leg. But you know, Sabato kicks the bucket. You know, he's defeated, uh, and the uh, blade of the immortal. You know, it's in the name. We got Manji. 
who actually has this kind of rare kind of blood worm uh, in his body that is capable of uh, reconnecting any, you know, cut off limbs, uh, cuts, gouges, you know, what, what you name it, 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 he, it could repair his body, you know? So that takes us, uh, it, you know, uh, that's going to bring us like moving forward into episode two. And we just kind of continue on their journey and they are visiting a friend of Rin, um, at the time where her parents were, you know, still with us. Uh, he, this gentleman is an artist. He doesn't remember her, you know, just because she's grown, but you know, as things, you know, their conversations start to go on. He just, you know, right away remembers, you know, like, oh my gosh, Rand, you've grown. And, uh, and she's basically uh, looking for allies, you guys. She did taking on this, uh, the Itu Ryu is just no simple task. And he's saying, this is like a fool's errand, you know, like, I know you're wanting to, uh, you know, like save the memory of your family, you know, bring honor to them by trying to take these guys out, but they're no joke. Um, and, but like, why are you asking a mere artist? Right. And she's like, you know, if, uh, if I came to you just, you know, knowing that you were a mere artist, like I would have never come, but you're a spy for the Shogunite, you know? So we got an, uh, kind of like an S class swordsman here, you guys. Um, and while this conversation is happening, we got some, you know, flunkies of the Itu Ryu just kind of listening in. And Manji, you know, even with one That's eye, something. Steve, he just catches this guy right away, you know, Senses. like this. Yes, he senses it, you know. So the so the the episode progresses, and we got what's, what's up, up, Zen? Uh, you know the and finally we start to get into this. Uh, now it's starting to become a war in this guy's house. Um, the gentleman's uh, gentleman's name is Master Sori. So uh, <laughs> Master Sori is just oh, this uh, is what the comment was. <laughs> what's up? You can tell me how much um, you like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's uh, my man. Bleeding Star is giving you props, man. He said that that's, that description, nice. Yes, that's right, my man, dude. Check it out, Amazon Prime. And so, you know, this is a war that's starting to break out, and you know, the flunkies are pretty much defeated easily by you know Manji, Master Sori, and Rin, who's starting to throw down. And they're in, in as the story kind of goes on in in episode two. Rin comes across her father's sword who actually um, the now the person that, you know, uh, owns the sword is a member of the Itu Ryu. Uh, this guy is very ninja s you know, he's a he's a swordsman, you know, uh, but he he kind of like doesn't claim like, oh, like I'm not a samurai, you know, but I am a swordsman. And so uh, this guy, uh, this guy goes by the name of uh uh, Magatsu and, you know, very ninja looking like, you know, gentlemen and Manji takes it, takes it upon himself to go and get this sword for Rin. Uh, he follows, uh, Magatsu into the woods, this muddy forest kind of, uh, area, you know, and the battle scenes, you guys are just, they're, they're on point. You know what I'm saying? Um, it just really does get to the, uh, the skills and the tricks of, you know, these swordsmen, and the one thing that I love about this anime, especially Manji, you guys, is that he's got weapons upon weapons, you know, like where does he get these wonderful toys? That's just the what <laughs> what 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 quote comes to mind when I see him. I mean, when he goes to battle, he just drops them all out of his kimono. You know, they're just just yeah. Uh, like, where's he hiding them? That's right. You know, um, and as these two engage, you know, they actually have fun kind of like with their with their fighting. Uh, they're very similar, I suppose, at least from what Manji says. He's like, you know, you're a guy that's like worthy of basically my blade. Um, and so they end up both wounding each other. Um, uh, and they basically Magatsu is like, here, take the blade. And he just lives to fight another day. And so, uh, you know, progressing on into the story, we get to see, uh, another character, uh, Steve, I don't know about you, but, uh, with this, another female character that's kind of coming in, uh, you know, I don't know if you got these, um, samurai showdown vibes from, uh, you know, Shiki, she just, uh, we get a, a girl by the name of Maki, you guys, and she was kind of like once a prostitute, just kind of living um, that life. But also she is a swordsman. She came up with a background of, 
you know, her mother was a prostitute, father was a swordsman, you know, so she's got both of these two very uh, different professions, but um, she decides she's a, she's a swordsman at heart. And, you know, she, she gives a, she gives Manji a run for her money in the beginning, excuse What's me, in the Dank? beginning. What's up, Dank? In the beginning, you guys, she just uh, gets owned by uh, Mr. Manji, you know, who try she tries to kind of seduce him, right, and just kind of lures him in. Uh, but he's too smart for that. And he just kind of, uh, you know, puts the beating on her, you know, lightfully, you know, because he's, you know, she's a gal. And uh, he's going to regret that later because she comes back, you guys, and we find out a little bit more into her backstory, um, just how, uh, how dangerous this woman is, you know, she... Uh, tries to get uh, picked up by a couple of dudes and she just 86 is them right away you guys Man. and so that first fight that we see maki and manji in the beginning is not the real maki what we see um and even uh manji as he's gonna engage uh in battle with her he tells her is like something's different about you and um uh, in a scene before she had longer hair and she cuts that off and she's like oh it must be my hair and nah he's like it's your eyes so she's got the mm -hmm. eyes, you know, of a, uh, of a killer, you guys, she really does. And, uh, you know, they throw down and you guys, this girl, again, very reminiscent of Samurai Showdown, Shiki, if you guys don't know her, Google her, she's dope. Uh, but yeah, he, she puts the beat down on Mr. Manji. He's like, you know, cuts, cuts his leg off his arm, you know, he loses like 75% of his weapons, you know. Um, yeah. The only thing that saves Manji from basically getting decapitated is Ren. She comes to the rescue. Uh, and the cool thing about Maki is that she wants to figure out what Ren's, you know, uh, like basically purpose. see how strong her, her resolve or her purpose is uh, because she knows uh, obviously that Ren and Manji are on the hunt for, you know, the Ituryu members. Um and she is somewhat close to the, the head honcho of the Ichiryu. Um, she wants to become like his co-conspirator. Uh, and so you kind of are seeing two different sides to, to Maki because she's got, she kind of vowed to take these guys' lives if she could, you know, basically become like the second in command, I guess you could say. And, uh, you know, after hearing Rin's resolve, you know, saying like, I know I got to get my hands dirty, but, uh, you know, I don't think it's, necessarily right to kind of take other people's lives and stuff for my sake but uh you know this is uh it, it's not necessary it's kind of like the way of the warrior you know like this is uh something that i have to kind of make right and so that's kind of the answer that what maki wants to hear and so she lets them go uh and she leaves a note uh to the to the head uh of the uh it's real and he's surprised you guys and so as we go into episode four, we get to see a little bit of the background of why um, uh, the the leader of the Ichiryu and Maki kind of have a, a relationship, and this uh, and uh, his grandfather uh, basically uh, was going to leave uh, Maki for dead. Uh, he was going to kill her, but then he says, "You know what? I kind of want a little fun with this." Throws her in the trees and says, "If she lasts the night without the wild hounds coming and nibbling on her ass." then, you know, she, uh, sh she's all right. But if not, you go outside and you bury her, you know, and the grandfather is just very Jeff. dominant here. What's up, Jeff? What's cracking, um, brother? And so that later uh, morning comes and we get to see Maki's skills, you guys. She just kills a bunch of these wild animals that uh, the grandfather thought was going to kill her. And so we find out the... um. We find out our the leader of the Ichiryu, and he, he goes by the name of Anatsu. And, um, you know, he's the heir to, you know, this whole clan. And uh, he is going off one by one, just basically dominating schools. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 80s, and, 80s and 90s anime for life. That's right, the anime. And uh, as... Uh, in the in the story we get to see rin who's actually kind of spying on this this swordsman and she's uh she gets some training uh from maki um i'm sorry from mr manji but he knows that she's just not gonna cut it and so what happens is she goes wandering in the forest and she sees 
uh, um, Anatsu practicing uh, at, with this, you know, his weapons, axe. you guys, his axe and his, uh, you know, that he's really doing it gracefully, chopping up leaves as they're falling on the ground and stuff. And uh, he, he notices her and he says for her to come out. He recognizes her and who she is. She tries to attack. He, you know, gets like a flesh wound, you know, a knife on the shoulder. And he's just like, girl, like, what you doing? And so he, <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> enough of that. And so, you know, he basically, he ties her up and he wants to hear, you know, I'm not going to kill you, but I want to hear like, what, 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 like what you're, I know what you're trying to achieve, but uh, you know, like I want you, I, I want to get, I kind of want to know, you know, what it is you know, how strong is your resolve, you know? Uh, and he gives us a little bit of history to how this all, uh, you know, unraveled. And so it, for me, I don't know about you, Steve, but when I saw Anatsu, I saw a very strong resemblance to Itachi, uh, you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, physical appearance and everything, and, you know, a little bit of, uh, of, of his philosophy, you know, he's, he's truly living out the way of the warrior, you guys. Uh, he, um, basically wanted things to be the way they should be in the way of the warrior that your school should not be, uh, you know, praised upon, uh, reputation. It should be basically your action speaking for it. So, uh, you know, you defeat the school to basically, uh, you know, solidify your spot as like a number one style or a style of true recognition. And he kind of explains that, uh, really in a ph philosophical way, uh, gives Rin some background and she kind of respects it in a way, but she still is just, you know, she, she, you could tell she, that she, just, she just wants vengeance, you know, she wants redemption. And so she's going to stop at nothing to get it. Uh, and you know, we get, that's a, a you know, we get introduced as episode five comes in and we get introduced to another character who I thought was also very unique. Uh, I didn't think that something like this was going to happen so soon. Uh, but as they're traveling, they get confronted by another member of the Itiryu uh, who knows of Manji's body. Uh, and as uh, you know, he gives, he, he wants to team up with Manji to try to take out Anatsu. Uh, but Manji is just not having it. And he's just telling him, you know, like, you know, piss off basically, you know? And so they get in a slight exchange, uh, strong female characters. That's right, baby. I love them. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and, uh, as, uh, they get in this little, like, kind of like a, just a little fight, they both get stabbed. Manji thinks this guy is done. And this guy goes by the name of Shizuma, a very tall in individual kind of looking like a monk. And so he, uh, uh, he stabs Manchi with a blade, but this blade is definitely tainted. You guys, uh, he knows, be, he knows Manchi's body all too well, only because he's got the same blood worm inside of his body, you guys. And so, uh, Manji is going through hell that evening. Rin gives him some antibiotics, but is trying to, uh, save him somehow. Uh, and a priestess that actually recommended Manji to be her bodyguard just so happens to be there. Uh, and it's just all too coincidental, right, Steve? I mean, mm -hmm. just the way that thing was planned out. And 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 that being so, it is true. Shizuma basically uh, took her her grandchild, the old woman's grandchild, to basically get Manji back, so that way he could, uh, if he can't persuade him to try to uh, become his ally to take out Anatsu, or basically just to kill him. And uh, you know, after some more sword play exchange. Rin also uh, goes in. Uh, she gets captured. Manji, his body starts to recuperate, uh, you know, from the antibiotics, it seems like that Rin gave. And then he goes and he saves her. Um, and uh, a little bit of a heartfelt exchange was goes on between him and Shizuma. Uh, and, you know, Shizuma goes, lays there with his head decapitated. And so it seems like that should be one of the ways to basically defeat a person with that, uh, blood worm in their body and uh you know the uh, unfortunately to the old woman she kicks the bucket she zooms like yeah i'm not gonna let her go uh you know so it's not a happy ending for everybody you guys sorry to say this is definitely a uh you know tale of the warrior and uh you know as we're rounding out to our last episode you guys we get another member uh of the itu who has a son this member is kind of acting as if he's not 
uh, a member, you know, he's kind of on the, I guess you could say on the reserves, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy the way the exchange is because Rin saves this guy's son. Um, uh, uh, Kawa, Kawamaki is the swordsman's name. He's got a son named Renzo uh, and uh, Rin saves his son just basically from an ass whooping, almost a killing from just a kind of a local that was inside of the town. And as, uh, as the plot thickens and the son wants to bring Rin in to the household, then she figures out, Oh, like I know exactly who you are. He doesn't really know who she is. And this guy uh, is a, a mask maker, you know, paints the Kabuki masks and everything. Um, and before, you know, he hears Rin's tale, she says like, I'm not going to kill you, you know, because you have a son and I, I don't want him to live the life of vengeance the way that I am doing right now. Um, but the guy just is kind of like a heart, heartless guy, you know, he's a killer and he's going to try to take Rin out. Manji comes in to save the day. Uh, but the, the Renzo, he comes in you guys and he sees that. So now you think that he's going to end up living the same life, but, uh manji also has a heart chops off his arm and they, they pretend to bury the body uh you know out in the distance and give renzo some peace of mind uh knowing that now he's just fatherless has no mother and uh you know they're trying to give him a little hope for this life you know that he uh, uh, in these in this era you know it's the way of the sword you guys and you know that being said, that just rounds out what episode basically one through six. Uh, you know, there's definitely a lot of details in the in the story, you guys. It's really enriched the art style, the music, the voice acting. I mean, everything is just together, you guys. Amazon Prime hit 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 it right. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, if you again, if you guys are a fan of Ninja Scroll, the, like how Deanime said those '80s '90s style animes this is definitely the one you want to look into you guys it's uh it seems like it's going to be good and i'm looking for more steve what about you man oh man i can't wait dude i just i got to episode four stopped mm -hmm. right there um and it's been it's been great man the, the animation has been nothing short of amazing there's a lot of gore in it um yeah, the time. fight scenes are true reminiscent to samurai um it's just everything about it. Just I echo your sentiments. The music, the intro music pumps me up, man. I'm gonna be running with a samurai sword and you know <laughs> decapitate somebody. You know something vicious. You know what I mean? That's right, man. I'm I'm I, I want to go look at some swords right now. You know what I mean? I want to do some online shopping and see if I can I mean, find I might a bungee blade or something. I'm gonna try to go get some bamboo straight out of uh, you know, <laughs> straight out of a garden okay. and just chop it in half. See if I can. Do yeah, it. dude. I feel you. I feel you, man. But you know, I I'm looking forward to. Uh, un, uh, you know, unraveling the rest of the story with you guys, you know, uh, it is a little bit of a longer anime. So I'm glad you guys are on board with us to uh, kind of go on this journey. Um, you know, Steve, what do we got left for the week, man? Hit oh, us with man. It. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. So we got. We got movies. some tomorrow, right? Yeah, we got. Yeah, that's what I was going to get to. I was going to say we, we got, got some tomorrow, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Bam. You got you go. Got, there you go. You thank got a you. bleeding star, man. Thank you. Thank you. So we tomorrow we got movies and shows with Geek That's Driven right. and my Whoop. and myself and comics and pops Alonzo. We're gonna go over Shang Chi. We all got a chance to watch it this weekend with the Team Nerd Herd podcast and friends of the of the herd. We got some herd members to go with us, roll with us, watch it, and it was awesome. Nothing short of amazing. We celebrated my man Geek Driven's birthday. So happy again birthday yeah. weekend to jeff hbd yeah brother and then we went to uh to go eat so it was a great time uh so we're gonna be going over shang chi you guys tomorrow then you got thursday you got thursday we will be going with something long on the mondo mail call you guys already know that it's gonna be a great show he's always keeping the herd laughing <laughs> yeah. amongst uh, other characters in the herd you know no. need i say uh glenn 2k12 need i say uh, HK Wifey 420, who is right up in here. No, That's you ain't right. late, girl. You ain't late, girl. Ah, it's all no, good. Don't, it's all don't good, trip, girl. Sheena. You always don't trip. You know, we got you, baby. We got you, That's girl. That's right. That's right. And um, who else? Who else? The anime, et cetera. You, got, you know, you got Inja Binja up in there, too. I know, man. Joking around. We got it's some always a good time in the chat. Oh, yeah. It makes me want to just get off the show and then jump in the chat with them. <laughs> I mean, they're just doing, they just make the show that much better and that much enriched. 
That's then, weird. um, wow, we got Friday CBSI, my That's favorite right. first appearance of some mutants. So, with Alonzo and I, geek driven, and also, no, I believe it's your resident asshole, JR, and myself. All right. So, we're, so we're going to be rolling with CBSI, Ben, and Renovision, my boy Renovision. You know, go. and so we, we see we got a full stack, we got a full stack week. You know, uh, we did take last night off for uh, top picks of the week. Oh, last, that wasn't last night, right? Yeah, that was last night. That was last night. That man. was last night. I'm losing track of my days, guys. That's right. Them day out, those days off. That's what they do to you, man. Oh yeah, man. But yeah. that's it, man. I mean, we got we got a full week stacked up. I I, right. I can't wait to keep going over Blade of the Immortal because I'm I'm already on episode four. I'm gonna dive into episode five and six. Yeah. You know, and just keep going. But you guys, I, I got to tell you, Eric the Phoenix is not lying when he told me, "Yo, Steve." Check on my Amazon Prime and look this up, Blade of the Immortal. That first episode, man, just sets you off. You're just like, wow. Yeah, like, you step was... you step into it. You step into it right away, you guys. So, you know, definitely yeah. check it out. Definitely check, check it, it out. out. And we got a couple of more, you know, animes, you know, uh, in the uh, in the back burner for you guys. I'm yeah, I'm always taking a look out. And again, uh, list down in the comment section if you guys have any recommendations. I have. Um, you know, I do check them out. You know, we do check them out. Uh, DM me, you know, on Instagram. Uh, slide you know, into his DMs. Yeah, slide into my DMs with that anime talk. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to chat it up with you guys, you know. For sure. For yes. sure. Just definitely give us a like, comment. Tell us what you guys are viewing now as far yes. as anime. Things Absolutely. that you guys are viewing, things that we should probably be on the radar. Maybe, maybe Eric the Phoenix might just go over some of those. I mean, we got, right. like you said, my man said he got uh, a lot of animes and foresight in the back burner. So he got a lot of great shows and a lot of the different ideas that he's going to be bringing, guys. So support my man, support the Team Nerd Herd podcast, support the community. And yeah, we always appreciate you guys' support, man. You guys, always, you guys always show the love. So we, we feel you guys. We feel it. Oh, yeah. And uh, Eric, so I, I think we're, we're done. I mean, we made yes. it at that, that mark. That's it, right. We, we, we met the threshold. There we go. There we go, you guys. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and take you guys out. If you want to do it right, anime for life. Anime for life. Peace out, fam. Later, y'all.